Hey, what's up my friends and family? Rest from Tampa Muay Thai over here. How's everybody doing today? So yeah, I'm definitely, definitely late to the hype train on this one. Uh, the Andrew Tate phenomenon probably dead by now. I heard he's been banned or uh, whatever. So, uh, so just full disclosure, I actually have no idea who Andrew Tate is. I've never watched any of his clips or whatever. I just know that he's known for saying controversial things. I don't really know because I also don't really care. Like, he's just another guy on the internet. It wasn't until I heard that he was a high-level kickboxer that I got some uh, interest in him. And I'm like, oh, martial artist, kickboxing, MMA, let's talk. But yeah, you know, when I found out he was a kickboxer, I was like, all right, cool, perfect. Now, I, now I'm interested. Now I want to see what that guy's got, right? This video is not a breakdown of his character, not a breakdown of the words he said, not trying to figure out Andrew Tate's motives or whatever the character he's playing online. This is just me looking at his fighting footage, his sparring footage, his kickboxing footage. And because I'm, I'm curious because everyone's saying he's like the greatest kickboxer of all time. And I'm like, is he really? I, I know, I, I may not be an expert at kickboxing, but I may know a thing or two. So I just want to take a look at it real quick and let's see how good he actually is. So I've got a couple of videos lined up. And we're going to start, uh, you know, we're going to start with some sparring sessions, you know, because Sparring is like really light fighting. You're not really fighting because you're not trying to kill the other guy. Usually. Um, you know, and then we're going to go from there and then we're going to go watch some of his professional fights. I'm going to break down his habits, his technique. We're going to break down some uh, his strengths, his weaknesses. We're going to break down his style. Is he offensive? Is he defensive? Is he elusive? Is he a stand and banger or, or you know, or, or, you know what, what kind of guards does he use? Because I'm very curious, all right? So that's what this video is. That's, uh, and that's what it's going to be. And with that said, let's move forward with the video. So the very first video we have is uh, just an Andrew Tate sparring session. This is from 2022, so it's very, very recent. So this will give us a very good idea of uh, of his capabilities and what and, and what he does. So let's take a look at this real quick. All right, so Andrew Tate, that's Andrew Tate on the left, and that's an MMA fighter on the right. Ooh, Andrew eats it. Straight left jab, just walking in. So right away, I see that Andrew Tate's hands are really low, right? Like they're they're both kind of low right now. So they're so it looks like they're just they're not really taking this seriously. They're just having fun right now, just playing a little touch tag, see who wins. You know, Andrew Tate sneaks in a quick left over there, and then whoop, block blocks him the kick real quick, backs up real quick, take scores a leg kick, very very good leg kick he scores, very good. And then you know he's just so, so he manages his distance very well. He doesn't cross his legs uh, in when he moves around, which is really good. Well, so so he crosses his legs when uh when they're not fighting, which is perfectly fine. But when uh when both guys are engaged, he gets his stance like right over there. His stance is good. His weight not too far forward. Uh, his chin is uh is, is a little bit exposed, but it's that's fine for now. It's not overly exposed. His head he leans his head a little bit too far forward for my liking, which makes it easier to tag. But uh but he, uh but he's also throwing really good counter shots too. Like he waits for the other guy to throw a shot, and then like he, the other guy makes a move first, like right over here, and then Andrew Tate reacts, steps up, backs up, spots the opening, and oh, scores a really good knockdown, very good knockdown. All right, good. All right, what else we got right here? So Andrew Tate, out he's just from the sparring session alone, I would say he is a very good counter uh, kicker, counter mover. Uh, sorry, I said kick when he kicked. So he's a very good counter striker. So like he does, so he waits for his opponent to react first, right? He and. He, when he sees the opening, he goes for it. He's not really trying to create the opening, at least from this sparring session alone anyway. You know, he doesn't really, like, go for the kill ASAP. You know, so, oh, he, was, he got tagged on the chin right over there. And that's enough for over there. That's the end of that video. Uh, so, all in all, just from that first sparring session, yeah, Tate is really, really good at distant management. He's really good at staying calm under pressure. His hands are a little bit low. I don't know if that's from... Uh, just because they're sparring and they're not taking it seriously or that's just or that's just how he is either way uh so yeah um distance management really good he seems to be very patient and doesn't overcommit on his attacks he does a single attack scores a point and then backs off so like he's not like trying to go for the overwhelming victory right there you know he just goes in scores uh scores a single shot backs off scores in single shot backs off oh so fight iq is definitely definitely there technique is definitely there um his uh his is distance management very high level so i'm liking what i'm seeing so far all right so what else do we got here because that was the basic sparring set so the next one this one is called sparring in a karate dojo with andrew tate however i'm looking at this this doesn't look like a karate dojo karate dojos don't typically have heavy bags at least not the ones i've seen anyway uh 
and they're not really wearing uh, traditional karate sparring gloves. Those are boxing gloves, if anything. Uh, let's take a look at this real quick and let's see what happens. The guy's got a boxing stance. That is a uh, that is not a karate stance at all. So they're so they're sparring in a karate dojo, but it looks like they're doing boxing because I'm definitely not seeing any kicks. So yeah, so right o so right over here again, we see Andrew Tate actually leaving, leaning his head forward, really far forward. He's actually trying to bait the attack out now. So Andrew's feeling really, really confident. He's like, "Come on, hit me in the head, hit me in the head." Not only is he leading his head really far forward, he's leaving his hands down by his waist. So he's really confident in his speed and, and his technique and his timing right now. So, so we're looking at a huge skill disparity right now. So this isn't really a good display of Andrew Tate's uh, abilities right now because he's not really fighting someone his skill level. He's clearly clearly much more experienced than this guy. This guy is probably just, uh, by the looks of it, about a, about a handful of years into boxing. Maybe has a couple fights. Maybe has a couple fights, but Andrew, by, by this time, I think he has like 70 or 80 fights. Uh, but yeah, oh, just sneaks right in, just comes on in. And the other thing is, Andrew's also like way taller, way better reach, and definitely outweighs this guy. And that's not Andrew's fault for being the bigger guy, so yeah, he's just he's just toying with him now. So this guy's and this guy feels defeated, so they're just uh clinching up right now, and yeah, so yeah, no kicks being thrown at all. So yeah, this is 100% a boxing match. He's just continuing to unload on this guy right now. And uh, this guy, he has no idea what to do. But Andrew, uh, yeah, hands down by his waist, chin continue exposed. He's pressing straight forward. He's not, even, he's not even creating angles right now. He doesn't need to create angles. He's just moving forward, right? So, again, just leading, leading the head forward. So he's feeling very confident. He's like, come on, hit me. Oh, my God, Andrew Tate, you clown. Yeah. So, uh, and, like, and, this, and he's crossing his footwork all over the place, too. So, like... <laughs> Andrew is breaking like every single rule, but that's because he knows that he can. You know, against like a against like a much lower skilled opponent than you, you just kind of do whatever you want, and that's kind of what we're seeing right now. So I don't really like this video as far as like seeing what Andrew Tate is capable of. I mean, it's good in that like we can see that he is actually a very skilled fighter that he can he can break rules and score points. All right, now this guy, second guy, different guy now, right? This guy is a lot more mobile, and all right, he's a lot more elusive. Uh, much more head movement going on, so Andrew's probably going to take it a little bit more seriously. You know, at least we we saw that in the beginning. But once again, we see him dropping the hands. We see him leaning his head way far forward. Right, he's leaving his hands down over by his chest, over by his weight. He has like some bit of a Philly guard going on, some bit of a Philly roll. Philly rolls when you is, is when you have this hand right over here, this one over by your chin, so this hand can protect him. This hand just launches forward. So Andrew kind of use is kind of using that right now. So, um. But he's also, again, once again, taller than his opponent, heavier than his opponent, faster than his opponent. So he can, t so he again, this he can do whatever he wants here. And yeah, the more I look at this gym, this is definitely not a karate gym. This is a hundred percent a boxing gym. Those bags that that are over there, those are boxing gym bags. Um, you you don't really see those in a karate dojo. I could be wrong. I don't know. But anyways, from, from what I'm looking at it, this is. And, and, and the fact that these guys are all boxers bo or, and boxing. Ooh, he scored a really good side shot. Let's take a look at that. I was a little distracted. So, yeah, so what happened over there? So he comes up up top. and he So by doing that, he brings the guard up. So this guy, he's like, oh, Andrew Tate's attacking my head. I got to bring all this up. I've got to tighten up my guard up here, which opens up this, which is what Andrew sees. You can see his eyes are actually looking down right now, and he just comes on in. Boom. With that sick, sick liver shot. And for those of you who have never taken a liver shot, it is one of the worst feelings in the world. And, you, and you're going to think I'm crazy when I say this. But I would actually rather take a shot to the nuts than a shot to the liver. Because a shot to the nuts, it fucking sucks, right? But it's going to hurt for about a minute, two minutes. After that, I'm back. I'm golden. I'm good to go, right? The pain is still there. The damage is done, but it's fine. I'm, I'm not gonna die. A shot to the liver, you're gonna feel that for like the next two, three days, or even a week. Liver shots are one of the worst shots in the world to take it's because the liver is exposed right over there. There's very little muscle in front of it, and just a shot right there deals so much damage. People have been KO'd by liver shots. You know, like the, you take a liver shot and you go down, you're 
done. You are done. A really good liver shot will knock you out. Or at least make you unable to fight. So TKO'd. A shot a shot to the a shot to the balls, a shot to the dick. You're giving your five minutes. After five minutes, you're right back up. And there's actually this guy over in Japan. His name is uh, Takeru. He's in K1 uh, kickboxing. He's actually kind of famous for being kicked in the nuts. And then after after that, he comes back and knocks the other guy out. It's actually really hilarious. And I feel for the man's balls every time he gets uh, a kick there. But then he comes back and he wins the fight. But a really good liver shot, you're not coming back from that. And that's what happened with this guy right over here. So boom, his liver is damaged. And and Andrew knows this. So he's just going to walk away. He's like, I'm going to give him time to recover. But there's a huge chance he's not coming back. Like, again, liver shots are really, really bad. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah, again, that, that was the end of that. He couldn't continue. So yeah, again, so I'm not a huge fan of this clip as far as, you know, uh, this doesn't really give a huge testament as to his ability. It's, it, it shows that he's really good. You know, his you know his movement's really good. He keep time his movement's really good. His movements are clean, but you know it doesn't. Look, but he's not going against people with his skill level. So anyone going against someone way lower them, way lower than them, is gonna look phenomenal. So I'm not a huge fan of this one. So what else we got here? Hold on. So the next one we have Tristan Tate versus Andrew Tate. So from what I understand, Tristan Tate is Andrew's older brother or younger. I don't. Know, I, I, I don't. I, they're, they're brothers, right? And Tristan Tate actually is like a much higher level fighter than Andrew. So. I don't know if that if that's sort of the fact. That's just what I've heard. So let's take a look at this uh, this video. It's two minutes long, so it's a quick sparring session. So, oh, there's Tristan Tate right over there, just smoking that cigar. All right, here we go. Andrew Tate on the left, Tristan Tate on the right. So I'm very happy with this. So Andrew Tate's Andrew's uh, guard much higher right now, much much higher. I'm definitely satisfied with this. So we, again, we see Andrew just being very elusive. You know, he doesn't engage if he doesn't need to. You know, they're up close, but he's not really swinging, not scoring shots. He's just making sure he's good to go. Distance management. So he wa he always waits for Tristan to come on in. Tr tr so Tristan's movements are actually really beautiful. They're fast, they're sharp, and they're precise. You know, he doesn't overcommit. He goes in, lands a shot, and it's a clean shot too. And after he lands a shot, he doesn't move his whole body back. He just moves his head back, keeps his head and body out of danger zone. So they're just boxing right now, so... Yeah, there's not really much room to kick. So Andrew, Andrew, again, being the bigger guy, being the taller guy, but he's actually kind of getting out box right now. It's actually really fascinating. So Tr so Tristan's actually coming in. He's, he's he's being shorter, but he's actually he's actually the one controlling the pace. Andrew is reacting to Tristan right now. Andrew's trying to press forward, but then every time they engage, Tristan lands more shots so far. So again, so again, right right over there just takes a straight left, just completely counters Andrew. So Andrew's actually, yeah, definitely on the receiving end on this one, which is really good. I love this video. Andrew tries to press the uh, pressure, but then Tristan just counters him right back with a huge flurry and just overwhelms Andrew. So yeah, against a higher level opponent, Andrew doesn't deal with uh, the pressure as well. He kind of, he has, has a tendency to close up a little bit and just kind of stay there. But again, they're also just in their, in the apartment right now. So movement is limited. So I'll give them the benefit of the doubt on that part. So yeah, all right. So this is a much better display of uh, Andrew against a high higher level guy, and against a higher level guy like Tristan. Well, so as as we saw, Tristan definitely uh, outboxed him over there again. That but again, that was just barring. They're in a, they're in a uh, freaking, they're in a living room of all places. So you know, it's, again, it's not a great display of what Andrew's capable of. But again, I liked what I saw. You know, um, he was patient. He didn't overcommit. Uh, but you know, he just closed up a little bit more, uh, which I'm attributing to the fact that you can't really move around much inside of a living room where there's couches and TVs. And I think I saw a, uh, a drum set in the background. I was, I wasn't really sure. I was barely paying attention, but again, so this is from 2012. This is Joe McGovern versus Andrew Tate. So, all right. So this is, uh, apparently this was the main event in Manchester. All right. So this is, all right. So. So kickboxing rules, right? So, so again, so this is 2012. So this is uh, about 10 years ago. So this is you know older footage. So right away, I'm again, I'm seeing Andrew's hands are very low by his waist, you know, and I'm feeling that this is starting to become a pattern with him. Like you can see where the other guy's hands are, like he'll block punches way better versus Andrew's are by his waist and by his che uh, chest at at the highest at all times. Like right now. And that's going to make his punches way easier to read 
because he, there's an actual one second in between. The guy just has to lift his hands like half half a millimeter, uh, and then to, to block the shots from that are coming from Andrew's waist. So, oh, that just happened. Something happened. I completely missed it. All right, so let's cut. So let's take a look at this real quick. All right. So what happened over here? Let's slow it down. All right, half speed. Boom, boom. So, so Andrews just completely uh, cornered this guy. This guy comes forward. Oh, my God. And Andrew just countered him with a beautiful lead hook. That was such a beautiful lead hook. What happened to my lighting? Oh, my the battery on my lights died. I'll fix that some other time. All right, so what happened right over here? So so this guy comes in uh, over here. And his, his, oh, my God. So he drops his guard now. So Andrew, Andrew sees that. And he knows what happened. Well, what happens when your guard is down? So he comes in, he throws in, he lifts his leg up. It's a feint, and then he opens up with a hook. Andrew slips it, and then he throws a check hook that just pops that guy right in the chin, and then that guy just goes down. That was a beautiful, beautiful timing. He just saw the second that hands dropped, and you can't, you have to be focused nonstop in this world, in this sport, in this world. You drop your hands for one second at the wrong time in front of the wrong guy, and you will go down. So that was a beautiful, beautiful knockdown. All right, the guy's back up. The guy's back up. So boom. Oh, my God. That was a... Oh, yeah, that's over. That guy's not getting up from that. Oh, he's back up. Let's see if he fights. Do they have a three knockdown rule? If there's a three knockdown rule, this guy's over. Yeah, it's over. Three knockdowns, and it's over. So, all right, so let's all right. So let's rewind that back a little bit. Let's see what happened over there. All right. So we got the video slowed down now, and so this is right before everything happened. So the guy, so the guy's back up on his feet. He's ready to fight, and now he just got knocked down. So he's keeping his hands up. So he's nervous right now. He's like, I just ate a che a lead check hook to the face. So now my hands are up. I'm not getting caught by a lead check hook instead. But the problem there is now all of this is exposed. And Andrew just lands a very, very good liver shot with his foot. Beautiful liver shot. Beautiful kick. Probably caught him when he was uh, when he was uh, inhaling too. So he kicked, knocked all the air out of him. So Andrew, he, he's just pouring on the pressure now because he knows this guy is done. Again, like I said earlier in, the, in this video, you don't come back from liver shots, man. You can try to come back, but that damage is really, really severe. So yeah, three knockdown rule in, in, in boxing and in kickboxing matches. Very good shot. Very good display of Andrew. So again, so just boom. Just coming in right overhead. And the guy comes on over here, over here drops his guard for a second, opens up, and just eats a check hook. And then the second, boom, just... When he gets nervous, just leaves his, leaves his side open. Andrew sees that opening, just goes for it, man. And then he knows that he, he knows that it's over. He just comes on in and just finishes the fight. Beautiful, beautiful technique. Andrew Tate, I'm a fan of your kickboxing. I love it. For, I love it a lot right now. So this is 2012. So this was 10 years ago. So that's 2012. Now we're on 2016. Andrew Tate. Uh, I can't. I'm not gonna try. Uh, Andrew Tate versus Jean Luc Benoit. All right. So let's take a look at this one. All right, so we have Jean-Luc Benoit in the white. We have Andrew Tate in the black. Again, so Andrew Tate, again, just has a habit of leaving his hands down. Again, huge pattern with him. Huge, huge pattern with him. And, we, and as we saw in the last clip, just how dangerous it is to continuously leave, leave your hands down like that. But again, Andrew Tate has his... Uh, the, it, the reason that Andrew Tate can get away with it is because he's a tall guy. He's a tall guy, heavy guy. I think he's about 200 pounds with a really good reach. So it's easier for him to uh uh to to defend from shorter guys who are going for his head because they've got a much more they've got a lot more work to do. It's not gonna work when Andrew's going against a guy with his same body mechanics. If a guy is his size, his height, and his uh weight, I could see Andrew getting knocked out by an overhand overhand right. Or some, or maybe some elbows, just because of how low he keeps his hands. And it happens when you, uh, when you're, uh, when you're a taller fighter, because you're not used to fighting guys your size, so you're used to getting away with keeping your hands down, which is what I'm assuming is going on here. 
So again, Andrew's just being really, really patient. He's a very patient fighter. He doesn't rush in. He doesn't bum rush. He doesn't go for the flurries. He just goes for the single one, two shots. That's it. Gets a shot and then moves right out. Just like right over there. Boom, one, two shots, moves right out. He doesn't over engage, you know? And he ma he manages his distance incredibly well. Uh, oh, looks, oh, looks like he's saying uh, don't tie up the head. So it looks like they're just doing uh, standard kickboxing rules where there's no clinching involved. All right, so yeah, so the guy's doing, so Andrew's doing good so far. I would, I would give that first round to Andrew, actually. The other guy is actually really good, actually, yeah. It's against a guy his own height, I'm, uh, that guy probably would have won the first round. But Andrew just has the physicality over him. So there's technique, there's condition, there's athleticism, and there's technicality. I would say technicality-wise, the other guy's probably better than Andrew Tate. Yeah, the guy maintains his guard very well. He keeps his hands up, movements. Uh, his kicks are so clean. Versus Andrew right now, he kind of opens him up a little bit every time he uh, goes in for the uh, goes in for the exchange. Versus the guy, he just guards up very good and he returns back to his guard very well. So when he does take damage, it's minimal damage. The only problem is Andrew's just better at distance management than him. So even when when he's close, you can see that he moves his body around very well. His head movement is top level. Oh, he just ate a left hook over there though. As I said that, Andrew just again he just maintains his distance. You know, and he doesn't overcommit. After after the exchange, he gets out of there really, really fast. Like he does, he doesn't stay in that person's range, and that's probably Andrew's biggest strength is that is his distance management. He's really good at distance management, and just being patient. You know, he's looking to play the long game. Oh, he just ate, ate two shots to the face though. That was bad. Yeah, his hands are just really low. Come on, Andrew, pick up your hands, man. Andrew, just pick up your hands. Do that for me. Please, please, pick up your hands. Oh, my God. I don't know if you guys saw that, but the guy could have knocked Andrew out really quick over there. I'm right, right over here. So, Andrew Tate, he goes in. The, uh, he, uh, the guy actually takes his right hand, just parries Andrew's hands down. His left hand is open, and there's a straight center line to his face. And this guy loads up, loads up perfectly open, perfectly open. This hand is just hanging out here right now. And just goes towards the face, but then he stops at the last second because he sees that right hook coming in, and he and he and he dodges the right hook instead of unloading on the right face. But if he committed, Andrew Tate would have taken one to the face, and he would have been down on the ground. That would have been a really devastating punch if that actually landed. But he did not commit, which makes me mm, that could have been such a beautiful shot. I mean, I'm glad that Andrew Tate's. I mean, I'm glad that the fighters aren't getting KO'd because I like seeing fighters not get too damaged um, because this is a tough sport. But at the same time, like, it, it, I, I battle my emotions of I don't like to see damage, but I like to see KOs at the same time, you know? It's, it's, it's a weird dynamic. I don't like seeing them get hurt, but I like seeing them hurt. It's weird. Pick up your hands, Andrew. Pick up your hands. So he doesn't know that he can get punished right now. This is what it feels. It's what it looks like. All right, referee just giving them another warning for the uh, for for grabbing. Ooh, that was actually a really close round. I'm actually not sure who I would give that to. I actually might give that to Jean. Jean looked really good that round, except he didn't commit on that one punch that would have sent Andrew to the mat. Andrew's feeling might be feeling a little frustrated right now because he can't because uh, he can't make anything anything significant happen. But the other guy, he is comfortable. Like his movements are so clean. I would say the other guy's actually like dictating the pace of the fight right, right now. He's actually in control of this round. Oh, he just outlined a beautiful overhand right. Sent Andrew backwards. The, the, the other guy's like techniques and fundamentals way higher than Andrew's right now. Andrew's like, your hands are too low, man. Your hands are... Oh, and he pays for it right there. Just takes a double. He just took, took a double hook to the, over, uh, to the face. Boom, right there, right? So they come and check. Boom, hands are low. And then just... Completely open right now. Just hooks him right over there, and then hooks him again right over here. You can see, you can see, man, my my man's head just got sent to the shadow realm. That stuff, that head is in a new zip code right now, my dude. And he, I don't even think he's in this freaking country right now. He just got double hooked so hard. As of the videos I've watched so far, he, I would say he's uh he's like a C level fighter. You know, high C level, maybe maybe even low B. But again, these are old fights, so you know I haven't seen any of his recent fights yet, except the sparring matches. But as of uh, but as of these few clips that I've watched so far, yeah, he's definitely definitely a uh, a 
mid-level kickboxer. You know, he's done, doing very well. Uh, but he's he's getting he's getting cleaned up by this guy right now. This guy is straight tearing Andrew apart. So so this guy's figured out Andrew's uh, Andrew's distance. He knows how to close his distance now. He knows how to uh, walk on in. Looks like Andrew has yet to really figure out this guy. He uh, because he's not able to stop this guy's uh, advances. He's not able to stop this guy from coming in, and he's not able to land super clean shots. Like he's got he's got a flurry going on right over there, but it's all hitting Jean's guard. Versus when Andrew comes on in, like, I'm sorry, when Jean comes on in, Jean's, he's landing the clean, cleaner shots. He's getting the better of the exchanges. You know, uh, the, the only thing is just that, again, Andrew's physicality, his size and his weight and his reach are just working in his favor right now. So round three, that that definitely 100% went to Jean. Right over here, so Andrew crosses his legs a lot, you know. There, so, so when we look at his stance, like right over here, it's an extremely, extremely bladed stance. That so this bladed stance, while it makes up here hard to hit, it exposes the legs to more uh, leg, uh, leg kicks, and it's harder to throw the back roundhouse. Versus this guy, he's a little bit more square. He's also a little bladed, too much for my preference. Well, I, which but again, that comes from me doing Muay Thai. Which Muay Thai, you have a very, very box stance, not a bladed stance. So between that and his hands down, it definitely. Uh, they say that it makes you a little bit faster. I don't really know i've tried that stance before it's I, I i know i've only tried it a few times but i don't know i didn't like it it wasn't it wasn't my style but what i'm for, for what i'm seeing right over here it's just not working in his favor and then when and then when they're moving andrew tends to cross his legs a little bit more so like, like right over there like he he's still engaged in the fight as and his legs get crossed and that throws him off balance and it makes him a little, little wobbly and it removes a lot of power in his shot so even if he's landing and his hand and his legs are crossed, the power isn't there. The snap isn't there. He's not able to, you know, the foundation, the connection of his body mechanics, they're not there. So that so he, so even if he does land, they're not heavy shots. They're not doing a lot of damage, you know. At this part of the fight, they're definitely tired. Oh, we're going we're gonna rewatch that. All right. So right over here, we see Andrew just doing a casual walk-in. His hands are low. His guard is not up. His chin is not tucked. This is the perfect scenario to take a shot to the face and get brought down. So again, no stance, no guard, chin exposed, everything wrong. Versus you see his opponent. His guard is up. His stance is there. Like he's ready to fight. Andrew is not ready to fight in this moment right now and boom rule number one of fighting whether you're doing jujitsu whether you're doing boxing kickboxing wrestling muay thai karate taekwondo wing chun whatever it is you're doing aikido protect yourself at all times every single time you have to protect yourself hands up stance ready don't cross your legs you know Get tuck your chin in at all times. Tuck your chin in so you're harder to hit. And if you do get hit, boom! You have your, the physics of your spine. You know you don't get your head snap back. Versus if your ch chin is like that, you get hit, boom! Your head snaps back. Yeah, I called it. You leave your hands down, you're gonna get hit with an overhand right. And what did he do? He got hit by an overhand right. Oh, now this guy's trying to finish the fight. And again, this guy's trying to finish, and and Andrew's just trying to survive right now. So yeah, when you leave your hands low, you can get away with that with against lower level guys. But at the higher levels, when the with the guys who have good fundamentals. So so far again, so at, so my assessment of Andrew Tate hasn't changed. He's still a C level fighter, as you know, as far as these fights are concerned. He hasn't learned though. He keeps his hands really low, and and, and I really want want to know why he keeps doing that. You know, his distance management is good. His patience is good, but the fact that he doesn't have a good uh, he doesn't have a good defense as far as like his guard is concerned, as far as his footwork is concerned, as far as his chin being not t not tucked. It's really bad. And again, this is from 2016, so you know, take everything that I'm saying here with a grain of salt because uh, you know it's been about you know it's been about like six or seven years since uh, since this fight. So, and now the other guy, he is tired. He just spent the whole last round trying to finish Andrew Tate. So that guy's pretty punched out right now. He emptied his gas tank. 
So right now is so right now is Andrew's uh chance to come back. Yeah, true. He took a big shot to the face earlier, but he did. But all he had to do last round was survive, so he didn't have to throw heavy shots. So right now, all he so right now the other guy is tired, and Andrew senses that, so which is why he's coming forward. And the other guy now the other guy is trying to survive right now. The other guy his he is spent. Andrew's just trying to come forward. He's Andrew's trying to apply the pressure. The other guy. Can he can he survive this round? I don't know. This is Andrew. If Andrew has a chance to come back, it is this round. So yeah, the other guy, his technique is gone. His fundamentals are gone. He's just completely tired. So Andrew's just having his way right now. Andrew's also tired. Don't get me wrong. Like you know this. You know like when you're in that ring, you know after a few rounds, you're fucking tired. But yeah. So, but that that guy's still throwing good shots though. He's still you know he he did catch Andrew just now with a uh with a lead uppercut, which comes. From Andrew leaving his hands down. And I wish he would stop doing that. Please stop doing that for me, Andrew. <laughs> now, now we're just throwing sloppy kicks. Now this is just embarrassing. Yep, and now they're just throwing haymakers. They're, the, they're both just trying to land that single Hail Mary, Hail Mary shot. That just takes the other guy down. So this, And you see this often in, like, in the later rounds of fights. It's just the guys just... Throwing as many shots as they possibly can, they're tired. Technique is out the window right now. This is pure heart. This is nothing but heart that is making these two guys continue to fight right now. I mean, props to both of these men. They they put on a very good show for us, you know. He needs to win this round decisively to make it a draw, as far as I'm concerned. But right now, uh, that guy actually hit Andrew with a really good uh right hook just now, as Andrew came in. And, and, and it's all because Andrew keeps leaving his guard open. And, oh, uh, no, that was a slip on both of them. Yeah. Let's watch that again. So, boom. Andrew comes on in. Sets, sets up with the lead. The guy throws over. So, yeah. So, that kick didn't land. They were just both thrown off balance by the weight of Jean's leg and Andrew being on one leg. So, that was a slip. That wasn't a knockdown on both of those guys. Andrew still... I'm sticking with my assessment. He's a he's a good fighter. He's got you know he's got he's got good he's got good fight IQ. He just got very very bad defense. And, and again, he just eats another shot to the face. The guy, as tired as he is, still keeps his hands up as high as he possibly can. You know, he does, he's he's not perfect with it, but again, he's just tired. Whereas Andrew just constantly leaving his hands open. I mean, constantly leaving his hands down. And he's constantly crossing his legs. And he's leading with his chin right now. His chin is heavily, heavily exposed. Which allows Jean to land more shots on Andrew's chin than Jean should be able to. <laughs> so that was actually a really good fight. I actually enjoyed that fight a lot. That was very, very good. You know. That last round could have gone either way. I'm probably going to give it to Jean and Luke at that part because, you know... He kind of controlled the pace on that one. Oh, and they get looks like they gave it to uh Andrew. That's interesting. I actually would have ruled it uh the other way around, but I could see I could see uh where there's a case for Andrew winning that one. So, anyways, that's in the past. So yeah, uh, so this fight is from twenty twenty one. So all right, so oh perfect, we got some stats here. So apparently, so apparently this is uh Andrew's final uh one of Andrew's last fights. So this is the most recent fight that. That exist. So this guy's kickboxing record. This is his debut f pro fight. Oh my god, that's not good. This is his first fight, and he's 19 years old, 1.78 meters, 94 kilograms. This guy does n should not be in the ring with Andrew. Andrew's gonna clean this guy up for breakfast. That is really not good. Andrew, you take a you take a L for this one. You know, I'm not giving this guy any uh. Any flack for it because you know because fighters what do they want to do they want to fight they don't really care who the opponent is in front of them they don't care if they're if it's a complete mismatch and that guy's gonna beat the crap out of them fighters are gonna fight they want to fight they don't care who they're gonna fight as long as they're fighting someone that's what they care about so I don't fault I don't fault this guy for uh for taking this fight but Andrew on the other hand oh man this is. I'm a little upset because I want to see him against a very high level fighter with his experience, you know, as, you know, kind of like the final video that we watch. Because again, all right, see look look at this. That guy's debut fight versus Andrew. 
75 wins, 9 losses. 84 fights versus the this guy, that guy's first fight. Now that guy, he's had some. He's probably had some amateur fights. He's probably done some hard sparring. He's probably traveled to other schools. So it's not like that guy doesn't know have ring experience. But if but your first pro fight versus a guy who is 84 fights deep, Andrew, hold this L. This is yours. But I've seen cases where uh, where pro fighters will, will, will they do a. Um, passing of the torch moment where they fight where they fight someone uh, less experienced from them with them like chris ross when he retired to uh asa tenpao like but again at, at that point asa tenpao had a name for himself right and chris Ro chris ross took that fight and he lost that fight but he was giving that torch now to asa as hey you're the next big future muay thai fighter of for america i this doesn't look like the case to me. This doesn't look like that's what's going to happen over here. This looks like Andrew Tate just taking another fight, just to take another fight, just to score a payday. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. And it's, but again, it's not my place to feel. We're just here to analyze Andrew Tate's box, uh, kickboxing skills. And I'm just up. The big thing I'm upset is we're probably not going to see the best of Andrew Tate in this fight, which is what I would love to see. Him against somebody where we can see. Andrew at his best and you beating up people who with no experience and not you at your best and we're not going to see that here it makes me sad I'm a sad I'm, I'm, I'm a sad guy right now so so this guy is uh, full of spice right now this guy's trying to uh, engage really hard right now this guy's applying the pressure all Andrew's doing is distance management and backing up and not over committing not over engaging so this is very smart on him when you fight with really really aggressive guys like this you don't you don't have to match their aggression because if you try to match their aggression and you don't have experience being aggressive you're gonna lose because you're not an aggressive fighter so what you do is you play to your strengths what has andrew's strengths been from the very first video that we watched he's elusive he keeps his head moving going on he manages distance very well which is what he's doing over here so he's not tr matching his aggression he's countering it with his distance management now again andrew's hands are really low and he's, getting away, and he's getting away with it because he's taller than the other guy. His reach is better than the other guy. So again, distance management. He's, he's not the one engaging. He's waiting for the other guy to engage. He was walking forward, applying a little bit of pressure. But he's not like throwing huge shots on him. He's just throwing a single shot, get out the way. A knee, get out the way. Wait for the other guy to engage. Throws on a shot, distance management. So yeah, every single one of these exchanges, the other guy, I think his name is Cosmic, or Conmec or whatever. I'm, I'm so sorry about butchering your name. Uh, the other guy is engaging first versus Andrew. He's just distance managing right now. You know, he walks forward, but not too fast. You know, keeping the head movement going on. Beautiful head movement by Andrew. Wow, that was actually really impressive. That was really good head movement. All right. Again, yeah, he's just walking around. He's And, and he's straying to the guy's right hand, uh, towards right hand, which is power side, which is very interesting because typically you want to circle... Uh, away from the power side andrew's actually walking towards his power side which is something you don't really see very often so the guy's doing that uh muay thai march really quick andrew's just beautiful head movement beautiful dodges beautiful dodges doesn't take any damage you know just backs up continues to roll oh th uh that guy slipped that was a slip right yeah that had to be a slip boom yeah he yeah there was, looks like there was some sweat there and he stepped and he uh stepped on it that wasn't a sweep that wasn't a dump or or, or anything and just comes comes on in. They tie up a little bit. The guy pushes Andrew back. Again, so I like that Andrew is able to. Uh, his head movement is really good over here. He's taking some boxing lessons. You can tell because because from the first fights where he just kind of left his chin open and he just kind of ate shots. Right now, his upper body movement is really really good, and he swings his head back and forth very 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 well. Oh, that was that. That's no good. So one thing, so one thing in kickboxing matches, you're scored on how strong you look, especially in Muay Thai. So if you kick another person but you fall back, you actually lose points for that on this judge's scorecards. It's like right over here. So Andrew landed a lead kick, but then Andrew fell back as well. So while he landed the kick, that actually didn't look good on his part. So that might count against him. The guy, the guy lunges forward, goes for a swing. Boo! He landed a really good overhand right on Andrew. Andrew felt that. He feels coming away right now. So he's like, 
You can tell he felt he's feeling some kind of way because he, he just immediately put the pressure forward. Just just as kind of a way of saying, hey, I, I ate your shot. Andrew's, Andrew's back to distance management. He's back to just backing up right now, and he's controlling the pace of the fight. And he's letting uh, the other guy just uh, tire himself out right now. So, boom. Oh, beautiful right hand from Andrew. Beautiful right hand. So, yeah. His head movement is actually incredibly good right now. Like, it's so much better than the first few fights. Like, beautiful head movement. So I think at this point, Andrew's figured out this guy's timing, and he's figured out this guy's distance. So right now, Andrew's being a little bit more aggressive because he's got this guy measured. He knows where he knows where the danger zone is, and he knows that he can get away with certain things. Now Andrew's being the aggressor. Only, uh, but again, he's being the aggressor without overcommitting, without uh, over throwing a high volume. He just presses forward, and when he senses the opening. He throws in a, a combo. He's not throwing flurries. Like, like the other guy is very overwhelmed right now. Whereas Andrew, nope, not nope, not not a TKO. He's giving him a standing eight count. This guy doesn't want to be in the ring anymore. This guy is tired. Yeah, he sh he just shook his head. He said, "I don't want to fight. This is over." Yep, call it off. Yep, and the and and he called it off. Andrew gets a TKO. Again, though, like Andrew is clearly on a different level from this guy. So. So yeah, so while Andrew decisively won this one, it definitely wasn't fair as far as skill level and experience was concerned. So I'm upset that this is the last fight video uh, that we're going to watch for this guy in order to gauge his skill. So again, I can't really gauge his skill from over here, but you know, if it's, if it's from 2016 to here, like his head movement improved, his distance management improved, his the fact that he keeps his hands low, still keeps his hand low is a bad thing, but his footwork got a better, so... He may have graduated from like from like C level to like low B level, which is where I would maybe rank him. I don't know. I don't really know. But yeah, he and it's it, and it's hard to tell from this fight alone. But all right, guys, we got one final fight. So this is from, uploaded recently. This is one of his earlier fights. This one is called Andrew Tate viciously knocked out. So we we already know what's gonna happen. The only reason I'm watching this is because I want to see why he got knocked out that's the only thing i care about that this i'm not trying to judge his skill or say that andrew tate's bad or whatever every fighter is going to take a loss throughout their career every single fighter there's no such thing as an undefeated fighter and yes that includes floyd mayweather he took some l's when he was an amateur fighter look that record up he is not undefeated and that's not a sh that's not me throwing shade at, at floyd mayweather you know i got nothing but respect for that guy I'm just saying, like, you know, just, just understand what act what's actually going on here. Every single fighter will take an L. All right. Looks like looks like we're in the round one, about two minutes in. So, here, per so, so right over here, we have a guy that's actually his height and his body mechanics. And right now, as I keep saying, Andrew's hands are really low, and I'm willing to bet that takes a uh, that takes that's a huge part in him getting viciously knocked out. Um. Another thing I'm noticing is this guy is a, he's a he's a Thai fighter. He's a Muay Thai fighter. His he has a very Muay Thai style stance. His the way the way he's bent over like that. And I don't know how many uh, Muay Thai fighters Andrews actually fought, but with your hands this low, this is every Muay Thai fighter's wet dream. Like we love like we love seeing moments like this because that means I'm about, that means I'm about to have my way with you. So this guy's a Muay Thai fighter. So. His hands are up. His stance is up. Going on. Boom. Beautiful clinching. Good clinching. Oh, flying knee straight to the chest. That landed right over there. And, and uh, you know, and as that lands, he's already clinching his head, ready to pull it down for some more damage. And as he pulls it down, he just throws a knee upwards, lands on Andrew's forehead. And this guy, he felt that knee land too, so he's feeling really good about himself right now. Andrew just, just taking damage. This guy just comes over the over the top with a big right hand at, and just clocks him. So, so that so he so, so let's rewind. He took a knee to the chest, and then he, he he got his head brought down in the clinch to another knee to the forehead, a big over right hand, and this and right over here he takes another knee from inside the clinch. And he's back inside the clinch. So, 
our, so Andrew's clinch experience is really bad, which is what's going on right now. So this has less to do with his hands. I mean, it's, it got set up because his hands were low. But this uh, this clinch game right now is just completely demolishing Andrew. So Andrew, at the timing of this fight, had really bad clinch experience. So I throws another knee upwards, but that one didn't land cleanly. And then just final that right hand just completely cleans him up. Let's see if there's a replay. It looks like there is. Oh, poor guy. So, yeah. So, flying knee. Knee to the head. Overhand right. Boom. All right? And and then opens him up. Drops his hand. And just comes on in with a big right hand. And then second knee just to finish it. And that is over. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. This isn't to say that Andrew is bad. Just that his habits against a similar sized opponent with similar body mechanics of leaving your hands down and your chin exposed, it sets you up for the start of all of this. All of this started with that flying knee, which could have been prevented if Andrew's hands, if his guard was up. But his guard wasn't up. It started the flying knee, and the result is what you see here. But again, this is an old fight. You can tell from the footage and the fact that Andrew has hair. Uh, he looks a whole lot younger right right over here. So he's, you know, I don't know how he fights right now because again, the last fight wasn't the best display of his uh, of his skill against another high level player. But that was definitely, definitely a very uh, so definitely a very good, interesting uh thing to watch. Um, Andrew Tate, he's a very, he's a good fighter. He knows what he's doing. You know, he's uh, you know, he, he's he's not new to the game. He's he's played this before. He's he's comfortable in the ring. He knows how to distance manage. He knows how to set up his shots. He knows how to be patient. He just needs to stop leaving his hands down and his chin exposed. But uh, but uh, but as of right now, he's retired, so that's about it. So all, all in all, I'm very 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 happy with what I see as far as Andrew Tate is concerned. Um, good fighter, you know. I'll give him a B ranking, you know, probably as far as skill level. And you know, unfortunately, we're not going to see any more fights from the guy because he is now officially retired. But you know, again, you know. Glad to uh, glad to analyze his uh, fights from one martial, from one kickboxer to another. All right, folks. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I definitely did. You know, got to see a very good display of Andrew Tate's skills. And with that being said, hope you all have a great rest of your day. And as always, be nice.